Once again, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Hello, hello everybody. I hope you're all doing great. You guys may uh, recognize this scene. This is a, an area that I came to several weeks ago and uh, I, took, I took a couple of photographs of this scene here with the waterfall in the foreground. And uh, you may recall that the light kind of changed. Uh, it wasn't really in my favor. So uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link up in the corner here. I've come back because I want to take some more images of this scene here, especially some horizontals, maybe some uh, panos. Uh, but I've also come here with my partner, Karen. Now she's not here with me. She's just sitting in the, in the van on the, on the road here. But uh, I, I really wanted to come here with someone else just in case uh, I got into trouble or uh, you know twisted an ankle or something because it is pretty treacherous around here. And there's an area down the creek here that I really want to explore. And of course, if I had had an accident, then nobody would find me whatsoever. So uh, that's why Karen's come along. Plus, she needs a break from work. I still really absolutely love this scene here with all these logs crisscrossed uh, uh, just over the creek here. So it, it really is beautiful. So I'm going to set up my camera and I'll show you the composition that I have. As I said, I'm going to take several different formats. It's funny, when I got the images home from the other week, uh, there were lots of compositions that I'd wish I'd given a try. So that's another reason why I've come back to this spot here. This is a little bit awkward where I am. Uh, and it's, it's so dark in here. Uh, it's a pretty gloomy day today. I think overall the light will be better and it's not as windy as it was before uh, or the last time I was here. So I think this will work out quite well. So what I've decided to do uh, is first go with a, a 16 by nine format. Now you can see that the waterfall doesn't really pay uh, any kind of uh, important uh, part in this in this composition. What I really like is again these trees that have fallen over and they've kind of crisscrossed. Now I would like to include this top one as much as possible um, without including too much sky. So I think what I'm going to do here is just raise that just a little bit and you can see this is where this uh, geared head comes in really handy is when you want to do those micro adjustments. With a ball head, I mean, it can be done. I mean, it's not a huge problem, but uh, with the geared heads, it just, it just allows you to uh, get a, a more precise composition. And of course, I'm in no rush right now because the light's not gonna change. Nothing's really moving. So I can just take my time and, and really think about what it is I'm trying to photograph and, and how I'm gonna get that, uh, that scene across to my viewer. If I swivel over to this side, you can see that we have this broken uh, tree limb here. And, whoops. So now the, the scene just seems off balance to me. And what I mean by that is this side feels very heavy, whereas this side has a lot going on in it. So all the interest right now is over here. And this side doesn't seem to have as much interest. If I move the camera this way too far, say like that, now that might work, 
Um, but these little saplings here on the side aren't really that interesting. What's really interesting to me are the big trees, the cedars, and uh, those limbs that are, or the, the trees that have fallen down. So I've more or less centered those like that. And uh, of course I will take some variations on that theme. Um, like I might raise this just a little bit just to include some more of those background trees but you'll notice that all of a sudden we're starting to include more of the sky which uh, I don't really want uh, but sometimes it's unavoidable. I like this this log in the back here crisscrossing and then crisscrossing and then we have these ferns kind of sweeping over uh, the creek there. You have to remember also that even though this is cropped in camera, uh, when I get the raw file or upload the raw file to Photoshop or Lightroom, you'll be able to see the whole image uncropped. So if I have to adjust the crop, then uh, this will still work. So I think that's pretty good right there. And then as far as um, uh, focusing uh, goes, whoops, sorry about that. Um, what I'm gonna do is just focus right where this square is just past this foreground fern. So we'll focus on that. And uh, I'm just gonna take a, a quick shot. Now then, we're at uh, two seconds, F13, ISO 100. It's a little too uh, underexposed. You can see by the histogram at the base here that we're way over to the left. So we wanna bring that over to the right a bit more. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, increase my shutter speed. It's going to be pretty slow. Eight seconds. Can we get away with eight seconds? Let's go with six seconds. See how that... We've got it on a two second timer. Now the ferns are moving a little bit. So what I'm probably gonna to have to do is just up the ISO. I mean, really, there isn't a huge difference between ISO 100 and 400 and 800. Uh, the noise is negligible. So there's no reason not to uh, change your ISO, especially with the modern cameras these days. So let's uh, increase our ISO to, uh, let's go with 400. And we're gonna bring the, the shutter speed down. Let's bring it down to two seconds. I think I could probably get away with two seconds. All right, and then we're just gonna have a quick look at that to make sure that everything is in sharp focus. Now, remember this profile that I have right now, I think it's on uh, Fujichrome Provia. We're just interested in the, the focus. So I want to try and get everything in the background uh, as focused as I can. And it uh, looks pretty good. And then the foreground, I want to make sure that I have those ferns in sharp focus. Now this one is out, probably because it was moving. Yeah, this one's out a little bit too, so it might be a bit of a depth of field issue there, I'm not sure. All right, so I'm just gonna play around with this. Uh, depth of field, I might bring it up to F16 to try and get those uh, foreground ferns in sharp focus. I'd rather have the ferns in focus in the foreground than, uh, in the, than the trees in the background, to be honest with you. So uh, anyway, that it, let's have a look, quick look at that again. Yeah, I quite like that. Anyway, that's my composition. I'm gonna keep playing around with this, different formats and uh, and see what we can come away with uh, this week.
Right, this really was a fabulous area. I hope I'm not boring you to tears with uh, these forest images, but I, I just can't get enough of them. As you can see in the uh, RAW file, the contrast and the colors uh, are just excellent. Uh, there isn't really a lot that you have to do to this image. You will notice though that the stream it doesn't really play an integral part to the photograph, it just happens to be there. And I think in this case, especially in the raw file, uh, it's actually a little bit distracting. So this is the uh, uncropped raw file. And then this image here is uh, after it's been processed. Now, some of you might like it before I processed it. What I ended up doing though, was uh, just darkening the edges just a little bit and trying to draw your attention away from that stream in the bottom and brightening up the, se the center portion a little bit there and adding some contrast and uh, just kind of dodging and burning a, a little bit, ever so slightly though. Something else that I decided to do was convert this uh, composition into a black and white. And I think in this case, it works quite well. Now I'll be the first to admit that there's a lot going on in this frame. There's a lot of details in there, but I think as a, a print, this would probably work quite well, especially a large print. And then lastly, here is the uh, original cropped version that I was talking about while I was in the field there. And I think it works really well. We've eliminated the uh, the stream at the bottom, so there's no distracting elements there. And uh, we're just more or less concentrating on the ferns in the foreground, sweeping around, and also those beautiful trees in the background. That's the part that I really, really enjoy in this photograph. It's funny because as I was looking at the video backed up even further, I saw more compositions of this area. So I will probably be going back again and again. And uh, as I've mentioned in lots of my previous videos, that's one of the things that I really enjoy about areas that are relatively close to home is that, you know, you could just keep going back and perfecting those compositions as long as the scene hasn't changed too much. Now, the chances of this scene changing uh, are very real uh, because this is slated to be logged uh, at some point. And also trees come down on their own from wind and uh, the creek might swell and, and change the landscape. So there's all kinds of different things that could change each time you visit these places. Right, I'm just gonna throw in a quick word about our sponsor today, and then we'll continue our exploration of this wonderful old growth forest. Once again, I'd like to thank Squarespace for their continued support of my channel. Over the last week or so, I've been updating my website store and Squarespace have certainly made the task an easy one. Listing my products, adding descriptions, prices, keeping track of stock, payments, taxes, and shipping can all be integrated and customized into your website very easily and quickly with a Squarespace website. Whether you're a pro photographer wanting to sell your work or an amateur who wants to show the world your art, Squarespace has all of the tools to get you set up. Interested? Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And if you enjoy what you find, use the code Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. All right, I've come down the other side of the logging road and I really wanted to explore this creek. And looking from the logging road, it looked like some of the big old trees that have fallen over the creek would look really good. But as I've kind of got down a bit further, the creek isn't really what I thought it was going to be. You'll notice that uh, there's a lot of granite boulders and they don't have any moss on them or anything like that. So what's happened is over the years, you know, every now and then you get these flash floods or you get a lot of rain and it'll just wash everything down. So it almost looks like an avalanche chute. And uh, even the, the trees are absolutely spectacular in here. It's really hard to, to get a nice shot of this particular creek with some of those trees. So uh, I'll keep looking around for uh, perhaps a group of trees without the creek. All right, I think I might have found a, a composition 
I'm actually using my 23 millimeter lens, which is the wide angle lens. It's the widest lens that I think I can get for this camera. Ends up being about uh, a 17 millimeter on 35 millimeter format. It might be a little bit too wide, but I can always crop it a little bit. I think the, uh, the 32 to 64 might be, uh, you know, might be zoomed in too much. So what I'm trying to do is include uh, the creek in the foreground and then we got some beautiful trees in the background kind of leaning to the left and the right. I do wish that there was a, a little bit more fog in here but look this way it's actually raining quite hard and uh, there is fog in the forest behind me uh, but as I've said in past videos I really don't think it is able to penetrate these forests they're quite quite dense so it's hard to see the separation between the foreground trees and the background trees so what I've tried to do is make sure that I separate those trees so that they're not overlapping at least that helps with uh, kind of defining where the trees are it's a pretty nice scene but it is getting uh, quite late in the day and quite dark and uh, it's raining quite hard so I, I think this might be it for today I was a little bit disappointed uh, I really thought there was going to be some really great stuff down lower but uh, I couldn't find anything perhaps if I hiked down even further I might find something but what I found uh, a lot of down there is uh, big old trees that have fallen over the creek and uh, it, it didn't it didn't look that great it didn't look as good as I thought it was going to be a bad day of exploration and photography. I was a little bit disappointed with the lower section as I really thought that there was going to be some mossy boulders and big old trees kind of overhanging over the creek. The boulders didn't really seem to go with the surrounding environment. I loved the trees but without the moss on those boulders it didn't really seem to uh, to go together. Still I took a shot and uh, it's not a bad photograph. I would have liked a faster shutter speed, but because it was so dark, even at a high ISO, I had trouble getting that shutter speed up higher. In retrospect, I guess I could have focus stacked this and shot at a, a shallower depth of field and just kind of stacked those images. But to be honest with you, I much prefer just to take it all in one shot. Anyway, this is the shot I have. And then later on, uh, we did go to some other areas in the Renfrew area, but it just absolutely poured. And that was a week ago, and it's still raining now. In this photograph here, uh, this is a tree that I've photographed many times, and usually it's surrounded by meadows and grasslands, but as you can see, it's, it's flooded. So uh, yeah, a lot of water in the area right now, both on the west coast of Vancouver Island and the east coast. All right, everybody, thanks ever so much for watching again this week. Stay tuned for next week's video. And until then, happy shooting. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.